Black Panther Wakanda Forever just hit the silver screen with force. Not just raking in millions of dollars for Disney, but also introducing new characters and concepts that are sure to light up the MCU. Namor, for one, is the name on everyone's mind right now, plus officially passing on the Black Panther torch to Suri. Today, let's talk a little about what Namor means to the MCU and Marvel's new Black Panther unveiling. First, the problem with how Namor fits into the MCU. It's no secret that the Marvel Cinematic Universe's timeline is messed up right now and all fingers point straight to the snap incident caused by Thanos way back in Infinity War. More specifically, the issue starts with the question, where was Namor back when everyone was fighting Thanos? Now, Wakanda Forever established Namor as a pretty strong guy and more importantly, one who would do anything to protect and fight for his people against any threat. That really begs one question then, where he was in the final fight against Thanos when pretty much every person who can be vaguely seen as a superhero was ready to throw hands. It's not like he'd shy away from a fight either. Namor was shown to be incredibly strong in Wakanda Forever, able to take the titanic M'Baku out with a single punch. On top of that, it's even been confirmed that when on his home turf, water, he packs as much of a punch as the Incredible Hulk. This guy's no pushover, which makes it even stranger that he wasn't immediately launching himself at Thanos the second his kingdom was threatened. Next, what he might have been up to. Now, there is a pretty broad range of explanations that can be used to justify why we didn't see Namor earlier in the MCU, besides the fact that the character simply didn't exist on screen at the time. For one thing, Wakanda Forever could take a page from the Eternals and write it off as him not wanting to be involved in the affairs of the world. After all, Tolokan's isolationism makes even Wakanda's strict foreign policy look as open and welcome as Disneyland, with an intense hatred for the surface world and all of its happenings. While this isn't the best explanation, it's seems to be one of Disney's go-tos. Another explanation could simply be there is no explanation. The MCU has gotten bigger than anyone could have ever imagined, and just like how in the comics continuity gets ignored sometimes in favor of streamlining, the same can be seen in this phase of the MCU. After all, for audiences, it's been years since Infinity War and Endgame, and it doesn't seem very feasible to keep calling back to those movies and their influence on the MCU. Coming up, Namor breaks the biggest MCU villain curse. Ah yes, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and its villain problem. More often than not, MCU movies struggle with producing a memorable villain. After all, who can name Mickelson's character in Doctor Strange? We sure can't, and we saw it twice. The big reason for this is the fact that Marvel seems to refuse to keep its villains alive. Can you imagine how great villains like Bale's gore might have been if they were actually written to survive for more than the two hour length of a single film? Creating characters with complexity and whom audiences can actually be impressed by is kind of hard when you know they're never going to show up again. Thankfully, Wakanda Forever bucks this trend by ending in peace, not violence, with an uneasy treaty being formed between Wakanda and Tolokan. Basically, Namor actually survives this one. For fans of the character, this is fantastic fantastic news, since Marvel now has a newly established character that they can take in exciting new directions in different projects. This means we could have more movies with Namor as an anti-hero, but also movies with him as the villain against his incredibly diverse rogues gallery from the comics, alongside his history of team-ups and interactions with various teams, including his famous dalliance with the Fantastic Four. Following that, what does his status as a mutant mean? Wakanda Forever seems to have taken a page out of comic book history by confirming Namor as the first name named Mutant in the MCU's main timeline, for the unaware who are confused about the hype for this, what that basically means is that Namor and Miss Marvel might be the exact gateway we need to start pushing the X-Men into the wider MCU. The idea of the X-Men doesn't seem too far-fetched at this point, after all Patrick Stewart did reprise his role as Professor X in Multiverse of Madness, and we even got hints about Kamala Khan's mutant origins at the end of Miss Marvel. At this point, it really looks like Marvel is gearing up to bring one of the world's best super superhero teams to the big screen. Interestingly, Namor might even be depicted as the oldest mutant in all of the MCU. Well, if they ignore Apocalypse from the Fox movies, that is. After all, Namor is said to be several hundred years old in the movie, meaning he probably has the title of oldest or even the first. It'll be interesting to see how this god king reacts to an entirely new kind of people that he holds seniority over. Next up, Disney
Disney reveals the first official look of Wright as Black Panther. A big part of the suspense and anticipation surrounding Wakanda Forever was the question of who would replace Bozeman's T'Challa as the titular Black Panther. The replacement would have to be someone whom audiences could immediately attach themselves to, someone who could have the same amount of charisma and gravitas that the late, great actor had. Well, now that the movie's been out for a while, Disney finally saw fit to release an official poster of Suri as Black Panther, arms crossed in the now iconic Wakanda Forever post, dressed head to toe in her Black Panther uniform. This passing of the torch represents many things, not least an entirely new future for the MCU and the Black Panther IP. After all, for a while, it seemed like the character as a whole might be retired as a sign of respect to Bozeman, but the cast and crew decided to pick themselves up and create a movie worthy of his legacy. This means Suri is now free to team up as Black Panther with various superheroes such as Ironheart, representing an entirely new age of Marvel heroes. Critics seem to agree with the decision to have Suri be Black Panther, praising the strength of the writing and character development present in her arc throughout the movie. Now for How Wright Navigated the Trauma of Her Co-Star's Death. Letitia Wright recently came out with how she felt about taking over for Bozeman, specifically how his death changed her life and the way she sees the people around her. The actress spoke to The Guardian about navigating through her grief, just the same as Suri did in the movie, and what that meant for her. For Wright, losing Chadwick so suddenly was a reminder of how short life is and how precious the relationship she surrounds herself with are. According to her, she now regularly checks in on her friends, cast, and crewmates, asking them about their health and trying to keep in touch as much as she can. This comes, after all, in the wake of Bozeman losing a silent battle with cancer, one that Wright and her castmates had no idea was ever occurring in the first place. She talked about the day she found out about the death and how difficult it was for her to accept that it happened, something that she learned to process over time through the help of the people around her. Lastly, the new Black Panther certainly is not controversy-free. Now, you might remember the days of Twitter during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic when debates were raging between vaxxers and anti-vaxxers. Surprisingly, you might not know this, but Wright was one of the many celebrities caught in controversy during that period of time after she reposted a video that many interpreted to be anti-vaccine. At the receiving end of a great deal of online anger and abuse, the actress decided to delete her Twitter, an act which only further angered people. Recently, during a Q&A session, she decided to address the apology for the first time in years, mentioning how she had apologized and that she didn't know that the creator of the video she shared was material notoriously transphobic. It's always interesting to see celebrities we see as heroes on the screen go through controversies that paint them as villains. In fact, some fans of Black Panther were even upset when it became clear she would take the mantle, citing what they saw as her problematic past. Well folks, there you have it. That's all the news we have about Namor and Black Panther and Wakanda Forever. What do you think is Namor's role in the MCU? Are you pumped about the official confirmation of the new Black Panther? Please let us know in the comments down below. For more Marvel-related news, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. See you all next time. Thank you so much for watching.